Flan Homer is jealous of Flanders, buys an RV, nearly dies, the end. <laughs> Right, episode seven. Season. Call of the Simpsons, season one. Season one. Call of the Simpsons by John Schwartzwelder, directed by Wesley Archer. First aired February 18th, 1990, and features the guest voice of Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks is probably the biggest addition in this episode to the um, sort of mythology, if you will, of yes. the Simpsons. He's in it a lot. He plays Hank Scorpio. Yes. Which is an amazing Scorpio. episode. That's sort of uh, when it's going downhill a bit, but that's an amazing that's episode. That's a great episode, yeah. And he plays, um, he's in that one, oh, it's hilarious, I've not watched it for ages, the one where um, Bart go, where he goes, why don't we all eat our shorts? No, it's, yes, we'll all eat our shorts. <laughs> he plays loads of characters, he's amazing in it. And um, But yeah, he's, he's, um, he's not, horribly, not amazing. He's horribly in unfunny this episode. He just tries too hard. Yeah. He, he plays the salesman for anyone who hasn't watched it for. Well, let's let's yeah. let's back up first. Let's discuss the episode. Let's just the plot of the episode. Okay. So. Give some context. Um. Basically, Flan Homer is jealous of Flanders. Buys an RV. Nearly dies. The end. Yeah. They get trapped in the woods. Mistaken for Bigfoot. Um. And jokes ensue about Homer's stupidity. Yep, this was a very, um, this one I think had the most structure so far, the classic one. So you had first seven minutes, we're sort of ramblingly getting to the main point of what the main... You know, you see that in a lot of later episodes, the first seven minutes will be like a little vignette that leads into the main one. Yeah, yeah. For example, Bart's Comet, that one, in oh, the yeah, opening, yeah. And Bart does something bad. He gets sent to the Skinner, and then he sees the comet. That's all the first act before they break. Yes. And, that, and this was the exact same thing, they go up to the RV... The point of the, the first act, the tension is whether they'll get the RV, then it's what will happen when they go. The, the RV goes over the hill, and then you can see the cut to the break. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't watch it on TV, so they want to no, cut no. to the break. We try and watch it like it was originally attended. Yes. But you can, you mean, it's still got that little boom, and then it stops and starts again, so you yeah. can tell where the acts are. I bet after that, it all kind of falls apart. Yeah, I thought the first uh, bit was probably the strongest, the first act. It was wasn't strong. It was just it wasn't strong. By comparison. Stronger. Yeah, exactly. I don't think Albert Brooks was funny at all. The fact. He's a great comedian he's, as well. He's great, he's great, yeah. He, he, make, he does great films as well. Yeah. He? But he was just te horribly unfunny as the yeah. oh-so-memorable RV salesman. Yeah, the RV salesman, who would have been Gil in a later He would have been Gil in a later one. Same for the news reporter as well. Like, there yeah. was a random news reporter talking about, you know, Bigfoot being on the loose in Springfield. Yeah. and had uh, the exact same character model as Homer with hair. Yeah, basically, yeah. And, like, that, that would have been... Uh, thinking, Ken Brocklestein. Ken, Bro Ken Brocklestein. That's Ken. a reference, by the way. <laughs> See if you can pick it up. Yeah, if you know what it is, leave a comment. <laughs> um, yeah, that would have been, like, Ken Brockman in a later episode. I yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't like this episode. No, it was a rubbish episode. I just thought it was just... Yeah. It wasn't as... Um, it wasn't as actively bad as like Moaning Lisa oh, or God. the Marilyn Ma Marvin Monroe one. Oh God! Even it though makes he a, he makes, makes, a <laughs> makes a re a reprise. He reprises the role. Now he's a biologist. Yeah, they didn't really know. I like to think they were trying to set up a a, um, a spin off. Oh no! Maybe it could have been like a recurring joke, where he's like a different scientist in each appearance. You know, like ah, maybe, yeah. maybe he's like a chemistry teacher in the next. That would have required Episodes invention, which yeah, the true. early ones don't seem to possess. Isn't no, it? not not really, not at all. No, yeah, but I mean, this and all puts um, lie to the claim that the first series is um, more grounded in reality. Realistic episodes. Yeah, this is supposed to be the great realistic first series, which is like a normal sitcom. This 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 plot has like well, there's not even there's no emotional like um, Call. through line, yeah, is there? No. There's no realism at all. This couldn't have. This is just a wha like a well, wacky plot. And stuff. Like the, the, the characters fall from like the hundreds of feet and they still survive and yeah yeah. And Maggie gets adopted by bears. That that was a weird. I didn't mind that plot as much. It's all right. It was a it was just a, a folksy little <laughs> the folksy little story. Yeah, about a, about a kid and a bear. Yeah. I see what they're trying to go for, but I don't really. I think they were just trying to give Maggie something to do. Yeah. And you know it's bad when you have to give characters something to do. That's true. That's, that's the worst. So, yeah, yeah. I think if this was a later one as well, 
that Maggie would have been left at home with Patty and Selma. Yeah, this wouldn't have bothered. No, because they do run up to the episode. Because it, it makes no character sense why Marge isn't more concerned about Maggie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, um, Marge just lets Maggie go off. Saying like, that she'll be okay. Yeah. Oh, Homer will look after her. That would never happen in a later episode. No, and it makes no sense that they think Homer's a good woodsman. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, like, like Homer in his early episodes, obviously, he's a completely different character. He's... Uh, he tries to be the ideal American dad, I guess, doesn't he? But yeah. he fails miserably. That's, I guess, the crux of his character, while in the later ones he's just, you know... He's just, just a fool. He's a fool, yeah. A, a fool in a in a stupid world, basically. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. Everyone's crazy in the later ones. This one, these ones, I can see that they are going for a more grounded approach. They, they're attempting to be, but it just doesn't work. Does no, it? not at all, really. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I don't know, really. It's not... No, it was, um, yeah, just the fact that it was more crazy than the rest of them. It was just a series of scenes played together in a sequence. Yeah, there was no sort of, um... No standout laugh moment, no... I don't think I laughed once. No, I, I, I might have smiled to myself. Yeah. Oh. I can see what they did there. I see what they did there. It's pretty much just time passes for 20 minutes. You know what we could talk about instead? We could talk about Boyhood. Boyhood. And how you've not seen it yet. No, I haven't seen Could it Could you yet. see the, this, this episode? I'm going to make it a connection here. This, okay. e- this episode attempts to show a passage of time. Oh, ah, yeah. And Boyhood shows that. Well, you that see line. the entire process. If you're not seeing Boyhood, you should watch it instead of Transformers 4. Yes. It's the exact same length as Transformers 4. Really? And that's it. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much the only connection it shares to it. Oh, good. So if you've not seen... Boyhood's made about $2 million at the box office so far. Yay. I think. Woo! So you should watch. You should watch that instead of see Transformers Four and this episode. Exactly. This yeah. episode did have a memorable um, lapse in time, which was just weird. The, the, there's a bit where they're in the news bits, and then like Marge says something, and they cut to the newspaper. Oh yeah, that makes, joke made no it sense. It makes no sense, yeah. and it isn't. It's not funny, but. I, but the joke is it's taking piss out of those um, yeah, the, the, the old spinning newspapers and, 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 and uh, yeah, and all, and all the gossip tabloids and all that. Yeah. Uh, the satire is much less pointed in these early episodes. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Like they would have really run with something about the media over over oh, hi- yeah, over hyping it all. Yeah, yeah. There's no balls to the satire in this no. uh, in this, these early episodes. And the whole Bigfoot thing, I think, is just they ran out of ideas. Oh, what, yeah. what can we dredge up? This does feel like for, they're trying to fill a 13 episode order. Oh, yeah. Or 12 definitely. episodes, obviously, because yeah, the first one would have yeah. been done well in advance. But definitely. Yeah, it feels like they got 12 episodes to do quickly, and they just uh, uh, we've got okay, a, We've got a series of, like, scenes that we like, and let's try yeah. and weave these scenes together. Yeah. Uh, a bit like Robert Orsi and uh, the other guy who writes for Transformers, oh, the, the Transformers films. Transformers films. And the Sp- Amazing Spider-Man 2. And that's a good film. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a good film. Yeah. Um, uh, a series of sequences loosely tied together with yeah. a story. Yeah, with barely a story. And, yeah. and a B-plot that makes no sense. Like, yeah. yeah. And in Spider-Man, t- Amazing Spider-Man 2's case, where I understand multiple B, C, D, E, F, G plots. Sort of. They're not really plots. They're just scenes that no. just come out of nowhere. I've heard of this, there's this whole scene dedicated to Aunt May becoming a nurse. Yes, there is. Yeah, no. but there's a little payoff there's where she's in the off. background... Holding some uh, like um, medical surprise. Oh, Seriously, yeah. they got like the big fight scene, and out of nowhere, it just cuts to her in the hospital, with no <laughs> establishing at all. Oh, just dear. like this is a thing. Oh God, I've not seen Amazing Spider-Man two yet, but it sounds dreadful, and I really it's want to possibly watch possibly the worst, worst film I've seen in a cinema for years. Really? Oh, it's god awful. Is it Transformers two bad? Um. Uh, probably it, it even shows less regard. It's not as bizarre. It's not even funny okay. in being bad. There's only a few funny bits, but yeah, it's yeah. just dreadful. It sounds like pretty much everything that's wrong with modern Hollywood in a single film. It is. There's not even enough. There's some bizarro elements. The guy who plays Harry Osborn plays him as if he has some kind of <laughs> disorder. He's like, oh no, oh, Spider-Man, Peter Parker. Yeah, he's like that, oh. Peter Parker. I hate how, like, I hate the first one as well. Yeah, the first one isn't a good film. It's it's part of a problem in modern Hollywood where, like... Uh, <laughs> Downvote us now. Downvote us now, yeah, we, we, we hate modern Hollywood. Exactly. Um, it, it's all part of, like, uh, I hate how the characters have got to be, like, destined now. 
Oh, like yeah. he's destined to be Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like the whole good thing about Spider-Man was like it was the, the spider bit like a random person. Yeah. And it happened to be a nerd, and it was kind of like, oh, kids, you know, anyone can be strong, anyone can be a hero. It doesn't matter if you're buff, uh, yeah, you know, cool that, or whatever. That doesn't go with modern Hollywood's idea that you know you have to be awesome. No, true. And yeah. normal people are boring to them. People. Exactly. Maybe they don't understand. On but, their ivory hill. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my ivory tower. Where's my ivory tower? Exactly. Uh, but w- what? Call of the Simpsons. Anyway, yeah, so we need to give it some kind of rating. Ah, I didn't like it. I don't know. It's n- it's not bad. It's not, not bad. Good. It's yeah. five out of ten. Maybe that's a little bit strong. I'd give it four out of ten. Four. Oh. Oh, it's worse than you gave Moaning Lisa, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no I, I gave Moaning Lisa a three, I think. You leave a comment. Yeah, call us on our... Call, us, call us out on our bullshit. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just awful. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've dedicated, like, half the episode to talk about other things. Exactly, that's that's good. I can't even really remember the beginning of this episode. Yeah, we, we watched it, and we literally just started recording this after watching the episode, and I don't remember anything about it. I can remember odd bits. It's like um uh, like a like a nightmare. This, this is what it reminds me of. This is what it reminds me of. It's like, oh no 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 no. This is us during the first season of The Simpsons. Exactly. No no. I'm considering uh, developing um, no. some kind. Of <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I don't know Continue. where I was going with that. I, you, you're deve- right I think we should uh, develop like a, a clinic for people post watching series with The Simpsons. And yeah, they need some kind of help. It's awful. It's used to make a sound. Then we just go like, oh, oh, oh. oh god! I think we should end this disaster this now. Is, this is awful. Yes. Good night, everybody.